What would you uh, like to see? What are you going to be looking for tonight in the president's State of the Union address? Can Democrats find any common ground with this president? Well, I'd like to see him talk about unity, but frankly, throughout his campaign and throughout his presidency, we've seen none of that. And you look at this morning where he's already attacking uh, Leader Schumer, and it doesn't give me a lot of hope for that. Uh, I think there are areas where uh, we can work together. Infrastructure done right can be win-win for everyone. I don't know why he didn't do this at the outset of his presidency, but it has to be done right. And, and what's going to happen with infrastructure, unfortunately, is there's going to be the, the Tea Party Republicans are uh, going to get religion on uh, fiscal responsibility, having abdicated that religion during the tax cut debate, but they're going to say, no, we can't do this unless there's a quote unquote pay for. And mm -hmm. that's going to be a challenge, not among Democrats, it's going to be a challenge among Republicans. So infrastructure done right can be a bipartisan issue. Uh, you know, we, in 2013, right. when I was working for Obama, you know, we, uh, the bipartisan immigration reform was passed in the United States Senate. Uh, we should do that again, but uh, he's going to have to have a willingness to take on people on his right flank. He has not Mr. shown Chairman, that willingness, unfortunately. Mr. Chairman, I was speaking with uh, Senator Richard Shelby earlier today, a Republican from Louisiana, and he was, you know, quite candid with me in the sense that he said, we want to get the president to try to build some type of consensus to avert another partial government shutdown. He's trying to shake things up, so to speak, is what he said. But, I, you know, I got to be honest here. It doesn't seem like Republicans and Democrats are, are really anywhere close to getting some type of deal. What, are you, what, need, what does the president need to say tonight in order to get folks back on the right track to avert another government shutdown? Well, I mean, this has been a self-inflicted wound from the president. He manufactured a crisis at the border in an effort to increase his leverage in conversations about uh, a political promise he made that has become a political trophy for him. If border security is your true concern, we could solve that problem because the best way to solve border security is with additional technology to make sure that we can catch bad guys, to make sure that uh, we are investing in, uh, in judges so that we can uh, more uh, right. rapidly adjudicate these cases, to help make sure we're fortifying other areas. I mean, you know, roughly two thirds of the folks who are here without documentation didn't come at the border, they came through airports. So uh, if, yeah. if that were the concern, we could, we could solve this problem. The problem is it's a trophy and it's not really anything else. And, and that's where, that's, that's on him, that's not on anyone else. I want to pick up on this point. You, you called it a trophy, but are we also to some extent playing a game of political semantics? I mean, it, it, whether the president's saying a smart wall or steel slats uh, or, you know, fencing at this point, I mean, it is c kind of a, it's becoming quite a sophomoric debate, no? Well, it, again, this was not a debate that the Democrats brought on. This was a crisis that he manufactured in order to try to get leverage. I, by the way, this shouldn't be a debate at all. I, I thought I heard him say once or twice, or perhaps a dozen times, that the Mexican government was gonna pay for this. And so here we are. And so, you know, again, we, we have a proven track record on the issue of security. What we should really be talking about now and tonight is how are we going to make sure that people with pre-existing conditions can keep their insurance? How can we actually bring down the cost of prescription drugs? Because uh, the profiteering that's going on here is unconscionable. Let me ask you about trade policy. The president says, well, you know, and, you know, semantics aside, he says that USMCA or NAFTA 2.0 would pay for the wall. Uh, but Democrats hmm. are, some in your party are skeptical of, of USMCA or NAFTA 2.0. Do you think Democrats will ultimately get on board with NAFTA 2.0 or does it still have a long way to go? Oh, I think it has a long way to go because yeah. the notion that NAFTA is going to pay for the wall, I mean, don't take my word for it. I mean, a number of independent experts who've looked at that have said uh, that's just not the case. And so, yeah. uh, you know, we, our North Star in trade is uh, the American worker. How do we make sure that we're uh, protecting the American worker? I think that's the most important interest we have to continue to look out for. Chairman Perez, you'll be with Speaker Pelosi later tonight. Last question for you. Another area of bipartisanship. A lot of folks in the business community want to know, or is there any bipartisanship that could occur on the issue of uh, pharmaceutical companies and drug pricing? I sure hope so, because it is such um, an important issue. I can't tell you the number of people who talk to me in particular about insulin 
diabetics who've seen the cost of insulin skyrocket. And uh, there are a host of things that we can and should do. I mean, why doesn't the federal government use its purchasing power to negotiate uh, lower prices? That, that's nuts. By the way, the VA does it. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're already doing it in some programs, but not others. There, there are so many things that ought to be done. And the reason they haven't been done is the pharmaceutical lobby has been uh, just dead set against it. We, we've got to put the, the people ahead of the pharmaceutical companies on this.